Have you ever done this where you've set up a point, you hit this ball that's hurt your opponent, and you're waiting for them to see what they're gonna do. They hit you a shot, it's short, but you don't make it up there in time. And by the time you get up there and you're trying to put this ball away, it's not a put away anymore. Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you how to make sure that doesn't happen from two fronts, because you have to understand this. The biggest problem isn't that you need some new technical fangle thing to do, is that we're missing the awareness piece. And I'm gonna explain what that is, and then we're gonna go through the technical piece just to make sure you have that too. So let's get started. What I'm talking about is how do we learn to attack short balls better? When we watch the pros, what do we see? We see them playing these points, and it seems like magic that they hit the shot that hurts your opponent, and they get a short ball, but they're already to the next ball. Bing, bing, bing. That's exactly right. They're already to the next ball. When I watch so many recreational players, they'll play the shot where they hit their forehand, and in my mind, I am absolutely screaming, go, get forward, move forward, get up there, and they're not getting up there. They're sitting on the baseline. And then their opponent hits them a short ball, which they then reply like, oh shoot, the ball bounces and it's short, and I need to get up there. So instead of having a ball here, and the reason I say this is important because it's above the net, they get a ball here or lower, which means now they have to pick the ball up and the ball has to go up and then down. You can see my excitement or not so excitement when this happens. My excitement's when the ball's above the net and I get to absolutely roast that ball. So what's going on? What's the mistake most players are missing? The mistake they're missing is realizing that when they hit a forcing shot, the most good opponents, if not any other opponent, is gonna probably have to defend. And if they're not good, they're probably gonna make a mistake. But most good opponents are gonna to try to defend a little bit or try to get that ball in when you're, or you're forcing them. So here's the tip. Whenever you hit a forcing shot, first you have to recognize you're hitting a forcing shot. Next, you need to move in at least two steps and keep the spidey sense ready to go. And what I mean by this is you have to now know when you hit a good deep shot and you put your opponent off, and how you know by that is because they're off balance and they can't rotate, maybe they're running, they're scrambling for the ball, that you need to now move into the court because the next ball is going to be short. And this is how you can reproduce the exact same feeling the pros get, that they hit a great shot knowing their opponent's going to react with some defense that's going to probably be short. If it's good defense, it might be deeper, but even if not, you're going to want to move in and try to put more pressure on the next ball, meaning that they get to hit their short ball here. Now that we understand the awareness component, let's talk about the technical component, because this is another area where sometimes I do see players that have a little bit of the awareness going on, but they're missing the technical portion. And what I mean by this is really simple. One of the biggest mistakes that I see players making is they don't prepare to hit the shot. And you're like, what? They don't prepare. It's preparing the right way. And so what I see players doing is they run up to the shot like this, the ball bounces, and the ball's going up, and they start taking the racket back. It's too late. What you want to do is when you get up to the ball, already have the racket back ready to go forward. See, when you're moving up to the ball with your racket back in this position, you're moving up there, you're using your feet basically to line the ball up with where you want the contact, and then you're just ready to go. The great thing about taking the ball higher is that now the ball's above the net. You have more direct access generally because you're shorter in the court and you can now really lean on the ball instead of waiting for that ball to drop, which I see so many players doing and having hit lots of topspin and then bringing the ball down. And you're thinking like, what's wrong with topspin? Well, topspin's great to control the ball. Guess what? It also slows the ball down. We don't want that. We want maximum speed, maximum penetration, well, enough penetration to hurt your opponent even more and maybe even finish the point. And so it's really key that in the three stages, meaning that preparing, we want to prepare early and move our feet up to the ball. Generally, start with preparing the racket, then move your feet. Number two, when we're going to accelerate, we're going to still accelerate slightly up because we do want a little spin. Slightly. We don't need a lot of heavy spin. And three is making sure after we're finishing the shot that we're still looking to see what's going to happen because most times players hit a shot and they go, oh, I'm done. <laughs> And guess what? Maybe your opponent does get to it, and what are they going to do? They're going to hit another ball, another lob, that you might have to hit an overhead or some other shot, or maybe another short ball. The key is not letting your mind kind of go, oh, I'm done. So many times this happens, and then we lose the point because we're not ready for the next shot. So now that you understand the concept of awareness and the concept of technique, let's go do some drills to work on this. I'm going to use 
my brand new ball machine, which I'll do a video on later to set this situation up and show you exactly how you should start preparing, moving, and executing the short ball when it sits up for you. Okay, now we're gonna work on how to drill this ball. Now again, this is the ball where we've attacked, our opponents left a short ball, and we have the awareness. What I mean by awareness is that when I ever I attack or I play a point that forces my opponent, you'll see this kind of posture in me where I start moving forward. I'm not fully committed, but I'm moving forward just enough to make sure that if the ball's short, I'm gonna be there. Now, the way I wanna work on this and to help you is to reverse engineer exactly what we need. Now, I have my ball machine set up over here. This is a Spin Fire 2. I'm gonna do a future video on this one. I absolutely love this ball machine. But the reason I wanna tell you, so uh, just check the description or somewhere, maybe I'll post on the screen, the settings. So if you do have a Spin Fire, you'll know exactly what the settings you should use to do this, uh, perform this drill. So, when we're talking about what we wanna do is focus on getting up to the ball and taking it high enough where now I have more access to the court. And what I mean by access from the court, where I'm standing right now, looking over the net, I can see probably halfway between the baseline and service line. So what I wanna do is focus on making sure when I hit this ball, my racket's prepared high enough, but not too high, because I don't wanna hit down on the ball, which causes us to miss a lot of balls in that. What I wanna do is be able to hit slightly up and create a little top spin, but still be very aggressive. I'm not going super brush. So the way I'm gonna set this ball machine up is just where I'm gonna focus on not having a big swing right here, right now, having my racket prepared, and basically standing here and just focusing on the swing first. The reason I want you to focus on the swing first instead of just running up here and setting up the ball machine to hit your balls is because if we can focus on the swing first and then start focusing on the movement, you know what the swing's supposed to be like and you know the positioning you're in to hit the best shot. If I was just to start from the baseline, a lot of times we won't get that right positioning. So have the ball machine set up, and I love this about the ball machine too, just hint, hint, that you can use a remote and this makes it so much easier to practice on things in a very specific manner. So I'm gonna have it go and feed me one ball and you can see I'm having to adjust my feet, but notice how as the ball bounces, I'm coming up and I'm still taking the ball pretty high. So coming up and you can see from here, this gives me plenty of room and it's not that hard because I have my racket prepared. Where a lot of players get in trouble is they go here and they, you can see that. You can see how I'm waiting for the ball to bounce and I'm late. Compared to, boom, as the ball comes out, you can see my racket's already in position. And now I'm adding a little bit more pace, a little bit more of my body. I missed it. I wanna make sure I open my racket face a little bit more. Okay, opened it, that went deeper. But you can still see, even on all these, I have plenty of top spin. That's the good one I wanna hit. And so, with this type of drill, just sit here and hit a bunch of balls, letting the ball come up and then taking it where you're going slightly up and through the shot. This is the first drill you're gonna wanna do to make sure you have this shot down. Now the second drill you're gonna wanna do is simply take a step back. So a second ago, I was doing this drill from about here. I'm gonna take a couple steps back. Now what this is gonna do is start to put me in a position where I have to A, prepare early and B, start adjusting my feet. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna still start with my racket up and ready and just simply move into position and hit. Now, a couple quick notes as we're moving in position and hitting. As I prepare and I'm moving up, I'm really making sure that my weight's going forward. This is a type of shot that I prefer to use kind of front foot hopping type footwork, meaning I'm gonna hit off my front foot and hop versus stop. The reason being is because of the ball bouncing so high, I don't wanna let it to continue to go up because it's gonna be too high if I stop. This also gives me the ability to adjust forward if I want to or adjust back if I need to, where if I'm in an open stance, I'm kinda stuck, okay? I would use an open stance when the ball's lower and I really know that the ball's not gonna move. So, second part of the drill, go ahead and start here. I have the ball, machine feed me a ball and I'm gonna move into position now and you can see how I'm really hitting off this front foot. Now what I really want you to pay attention to is the timing of how early my racket goes back. Ball hasn't bounced yet, racket's back. And all these balls for me have some topspin, meaning my swing is coming up to the ball. And you can see how this goes a little bit quicker. Now, third drill is we're gonna move back to the baseline. We're gonna start in a ready position, in this position, and when the ball comes, I'm gonna move, prepare, before the ball bounces and put myself into position to hit the shot. So, ball will come out, prepare, and it seems so much easy. So, interval's a little fast, we're gonna slow that down a little bit. But, you can see how 
my racket, slow down the interval a little bit more. My racket's prepared way before the ball bounces, giving me time to get up and strike the ball compared to take it back and I'm even caught there. And this is what so many players do is they wait to take it back and they can't get the right timing. This is why when I do this, it looks pretty smooth. I'm using my body weight going through the ball, no big deal. It's because of my early preparation, but don't forget, I am feeding off my awareness, meaning that a lot of players in this situation will hit a great shot and they'll sit here. The next one's short and they won't be able to get up there early enough because they're too far away from the ball. Making sure that if you hit a great shot, boom, ooh, I'm inside the core, oh, there's my short ball, and boom. And this is now how you can start really punishing your opponent when you hit a great shot, they defend, get one more ball back, you can get on top of that next ball and keep the pressure going. Now, if you like this video, there's one more thing you've gotta understand. It'll take this whole thing to the next level, which is understanding the four different phases of a tennis point, especially in singles. If you understand this, and it is in doubles too, I guess, but if you understand this, by understanding these four phases, you'll know where this fits in and how to work yourself up to it more often. And you can learn that by watching this video right here.